Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to have a short review of Final Fantasy X and what I think about it as a resource for learning Japanese. I have about 8 hours in the game so far, so I have some general ideas. So over the next few hours in my time, I'm going to play through, record some parts, and talk about what I think about it. I'm at about an N4 level right now, by the way. My kanji level is about N3, but my understanding is about N4. So this right here is actually a really good example. So I know this I know this sentence, but I don't actually know how to read this word right here. But I do know how to read the very first kanji. So this is actually heya. So I actually did know this word, but because I don't really see the word heya very often, I kind of forgot about it. So if you speak to like random NPCs, there is a chance that like you'll just remember a word that you're reading so like i i thought that this first kanji was the first kanji in the word heya and i forgot about the second kanji which is actually just ya which means room so after googling heya i was able to remember that this whole word right here with these two kanjis is heya but there's no furigana so because of that if i didn't know these kanjis i wouldn't really have a way to find out what it is i could use like google translate to turn on camera mode and kind of have the sentence translated to me and then I can try to find the definition of the word in a dictionary and then try to see if it's the same kanji. One of the weaknesses of Final Fantasy X is there's no furigana, so it can be harder to find words with completely new kanji. But this word basically means anta, which is a casual anata, so anta tatsi wa. So tachi is to make it your, so you could say like, you can say like watashi tachi, anata tachi, to be like ours or yours. So anta tachi is just a casual anata, so an anta tachi means your, but slightly more casual than anata tachi. And then mo is like already, so anta tachi mo heo tatan daro. So what this means is your already room take I'm predicting, dado, or a casual dado, is the casual form of disho. Disho is kind of like saying ne, like you're asking for the other person to agree with you, but it's a little different because it's also like predicting something is going to happen. So this sentence is actually saying, I predict that you already took a room, right? Because it translates as right, if you just say ne, like it'll be like you already took a room, right? But because he's saying dado, which is just the casual form of desho, what he's really saying is I predict that you already took a room, right? So I do think that it's good to just consume any Japanese content because you get time to because you get time to read Japanese as well. But the problem in Final Fantasy X is there's no furigana. So if the kanji is completely new, you can't really figure it out unless you use like Google Translate to get a picture of the meaning of the phrase and then you try to just put the meaning into a dictionary to hopefully find out what it actually means. So and to show is the same thing. Dado is just casual in comparison to to show. But at the same time, there is a weakness. Like if I'm about to speak to Lulu right now, has a voice to line, so I can listen to her pronunciation, but it just continues on like normal. So you would have to pause to actually be able to read the sentence if you can't catch everything that's heard on time. So now I have time to read this. So, Kona yukuri dekiri no wa saigo kamushin shirenai kara ne. So personally, I understand every word here, but it's kind of hard to figure out without the English translation. But that's not really a problem that just this game would face. That's more just like a person who's playing the game. So, if you can understand a whole sentence, but you don't really know what it means, then I would recommend you use like, if you just know how to say everything, just put it into a translator and then kind of see what the English translation is and then try to just think about that and then just go on to the next thing. Because you don't want to spend way too long on this or you'll just end up spending like seven hours in one room, which isn't really fun for anybody. So basically, if you put the sentence into a translator, it'll give you an English example. So it basically, the sentence means it may be the last time I can relax like this. So kanani means like this. Yukuri is slowly. Dekiru is to be able to. And no wa, I don't really know how to explain it, unfortunately. But saigo is the last. And then kamoshirenai 
is kind of like saying maybe. Like you could say kamo, the shiranai is just more polite, and then kamo shiremasen is the most polite. But it's the same thing. And then kara ne. Kara usually means like but or because. At the end of the sentence, it can imply that they want the other person to finish the sentence. And then just saying ne is like asking for what you think. Like, do you agree with me? So basically what the sentence is saying is like this, it's the last time that I might be able to take it easy. But as I mentioned, because this is a voice line, it'll just continue on. So you would have to physically pause the game each time to actually take a chance to read it. Some of the kanji in some of the places though are quite simple. Like, for example, it says Ryoko, which is uh, one of the first words I think most people might learn. But that second kanji there is the first kanji in koan. So you can go into a translator, or so you can go into a dictionary, type in koan, just delete the second kanji. And now you have the ko kanji from koan. And that second kanji right there is the second kanji in sushi. So what you can do is just put in sushi and delete the first character. So when you put these two characters together, it's read as kansu or koshi. So when you have these four characters together, it means ryoko koshi, which means travel corporation. Irasaimase, riso no ryoko koshi shoppu desu. What this person is exactly saying is, welcome to this person's shop whose name is riso. It's a travel corporation shop. So, in a more natural sense, welcome to Riso's Travel Corporation Shop. So, I do think that something good is the kanji can be quite simple most of the time. So, you may know a word that has one of the kanjis within a phrase, so you could put in a word to get that kanji. And then you can kind of find out the reading of the kanji and the definition of these new kanji characters together. Part of where the game can get pretty complicated would be with something like the names of things, like just a random made up name for a sword. It's not exactly intuitive how you would read this. So these are pretty common kanji, so kamenari, lightning, hikari, light, and maru, circle. So this pretty much means bright lightning circle, but that doesn't really actually describe what the thing is, in my opinion, because this is supposed to be a sword. Now, it's kind of fun and it's kind of interesting, but it's also kind of hard to figure out how to actually even read this properly. It's probably not Kamenari Hikari Maru. It might be like Raiko Maru. There's a numerous amount of possibilities, and without Furigana, it's pretty difficult to actually find out how you could possibly read this properly. So that is something that I have noticed there's going to be an issue with in this game because for a native speaker they could probably figure this out but for a non-native speaker, someone who's learning Japanese, you probably need an extreme amount of exposure before you would even be able to feel confident with how they want to describe this. It's possibly Raiko simply because it's kanjis together and if Maru is a suffix for swords then it's probably just read as Daiko Maru, but why aren't these other swords called Maru at the end? So it's the kind of thing that you can't really figure out very easily without Furigana, and this game just does not have Furigana or an option to turn on Furigana. You can just, you can derive the meaning from it because it means lightning bright circle, but what does a bright lightning circle have to do with a sword? And also, how do you read this properly? It's kind of hard to figure that out for these made-up names sometimes. It would be a little bit easier with Furigana, but you still wouldn't really understand exactly what this is supposed to refer to directly. So over the next few minutes, I'm just going to kind of add on to the way that everybody is speaking. I think that there is value in kind of analyzing it, because each character kind of has like a specific stereotype. I don't want to say stereotype, but a specific way of speaking. Aka is very overly manly, 
And then Titus is very much like a young man, just from my experience, with the way that they speak and the way that I've understood Japanese. So like Lulu will end sentences with wa, which is basically a very feminine way of ending a sentence with da or desu. And then Titus will end his sentences with su, like small tsu plus su, like to the, the su character. So this is kind of like a stereotypical way that some young men will speak. And then with Waka, he's pretty rough. Like he'll say like, he'll have a lot of like, he also says a lot of things with like ze and zo, which is not really used in common day life. It's basically just like an unnatural way of saying yo is how I understand it. Arin is very direct. He's kind of like Waka too, but a little bit less slangy. And then Yuna is actually quite easy to understand because she speaks generally quite politely without an excessive amount of slang, if any. I actually can't really think of much. But basically the endings in the sentences that everyone uses is quite versatile, and I definitely think it's worth paying attention to it, and then kind of researching how their ways of speaking specifically change. This way you can kind of get a used to how different personalities can be conveyed in Japanese. It's a little bit easier to see Waka's overly direct personality here, and pretty dramatic personality as well. And then Riku also speaks quite femininely, but also somewhat childlike as well. And then Aran is quite aggressive with his way of speaking. You see a lot of his endings are with the um, commanding form, or overall, in Final Fantasy, everybody speaks a little bit differently, and most of the dialogue is between the main characters here that you see. So you gain experience getting vocabulary from different kind of stereotypes within Japanese for speaking, so it can be quite valuable in learning how different personalities act in Japanese. Obviously, some of the stuff is over dramatic, but it's still well balanced in a way for where you're able to get exposure to many different possible ways of speaking in Japanese. Because the good thing about learning dramatic speech is you know what not to say. So I wouldn't recommend that you play games as your only source of learning Japanese. Speak with real people too. And when you see something new and dramatic, like sentence ending with wa, or Instead of yo, you see ze or zo. Kind of research what the difference is between that and yo and wa and da and desu and all those kind of things. But generally there is pretty much like a distinct way of speaking with everybody. And I find that Titus and Yuna, when they speak, their language is quite simple. There's a lot less kanji words. It's a little bit more conversational and easier to pick up. I think that at my current level, I understand about 50% of the language in this game, and I get the general idea of what's going on maybe 30% of the time at about an N4 to N3 level. Now obviously I've just played this game a lot in the past, so I already know the story because of that, so that's kind of maybe an unfair advantage. But it means that when it's at specific points in the story, I'm able to kind of see the contrast between English and Japanese, because I have the experience from playing in English, but now I have the ability to see how it changes in Japanese as well. So I also think it's good to play a game in English or whatever your native language is in and then play it in Japanese later. So overall, how is Final Fantasy X for learning Japanese? Any content is good content if you actually enjoy doing it. But realistically, there's no furigana, which is going to be quite challenging, especially if you want to learn new words. Like the word that they use for summon, I kind of forgot how to say it now. And it's kind of hard to actually find it, because if you just go in the dictionary and type in summon, you'll get like 10 different words, and it was not the one that they use in-game. So I had to send a picture of the kanji to one of my friends who's, who's Japanese, and say, how do you read this? Sometimes there's some very niche kanji that's hard to figure out that you're probably never really going to use in daily life, but there is also a lot of conversational things that you can pick up within the game. So I do think it's pretty good overall, but it's definitely not perfect and it's one of the harder games. So it would be better to find a game that uses Furigana. So as a game, I think it's 10 out of 10 because I love the story. And, but that's not what the review is really about. It's more about how is it for learning Japanese. I'm gonna say a seven out of 10. So I've learned about 50 words, give or take, or at least I've put about 50 words in my Anki deck while playing for about 10 hours. And I've been able to understand a reasonable amount of 
random NPC dialogue. Like if I just speak to a random villager and read what they say, I'm able to generally understand it. So I think that that's lower level vocabulary around N5 to N4. So I think that you can definitely play the game and enjoy it. But as soon as you get into like any of the main story cutscenes, that's kind of like, but not within the main cast, like you're speaking with supporting characters about the overarching world or story, you're probably not going to really understand what's going on, unless you're like an N3 or N2 level. But even then, some language is game specific, so realistically, you're going to have to just kind of get used to game language, and the only way you can do that is by playing games. But the fundamentals of the language carries over into real life. But again, the good thing that, in my opinion, about learning Japanese from games is you kind of learn basics and fundamentals and kind of flavor, flavorful ways of speaking, but you also kind of learn what not to say. So hopefully you found this video interesting and entertaining, and I'll make reviews about other games related to how it is for learning Japanese. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.